delay, but uh, make it very short. Um, you have the translation, one English, two French, three Spanish, and four Portuguese. Just a so short introduction, as you see. Um, we have on stage our president, uh, FIFA president, Mr. Blatter, Minister uh, Aldo Rebelo, Jacques Canuma, who is the acting chairman of the uh, organizing committee and also member of the FIFA executive committee, Jerome Valk, FIFA secretary general, Jose Maria Marin, LOC president and the president of the CBF, and uh, last but not least, Ricardo Trade, LOC CEO. Before I pass the floor for uh, opening remarks to the president, let's have a look on, on a video we prepared. Please go ahead. Brasília. 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 Recife. 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 Salvador. 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 Fortaleza. 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 Belo Horizonte. Belo Horizonte. Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Yes, and uh, now the floor to the president, please. Good afternoon, um, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Thank you for, for votre présence, being with us this afternoon and uh, especially a few days before the few days few days before the kickoff of uh, the FIFA's Confederations Cup Brazil 2013 i am uh, very happy to have uh, at my side in this very special moment when probably there will be some questions on organizational issues uh, to have um, the uh, Minister of Sports of uh, Brazil, Mr. Aldo Rebelo, on my side. I'm sure together uh, we will have, have answers if there are any questions. I just want to tell you a little bit about the history, but very short, very short, be ensured. At the beginning, it was an international championship for the King Fahd Cup, and it was played in Saudi Arabia in 1992, in 1995, even before in a smaller competition. And then as from 1990-79, FIFA took it over and named it FIFA Confederations Cup, and we played it every second year. We played it in Mexico in 99, in Korea in, in 99. We played it in Mexico, in Korea, Japan in 2001, 
2003 in France, and as from 2005 on, only every four years, and it was then used, said, used as rehearsal of the World Cup. It's not the rehearsal of the World Cup. It is uh, giving the organizer of a World Cup uh, the chance also to have two competitions, one smaller one year before the big World Cup. Okay, we can agree uh, that if uh, something uh, would happen that uh, shall be changed, then it gives the uh, possibility to the organizer and the FIFA uh, to make some changes. But this year we are not speaking about rehearsals because this year is really the competition of the champions. I'm not going to repeat who will participate. On the history of this competition, and this is linked with uh, one of the activities that FIFA is doing here in Brazil, and this is the legacy that FIFA would la leave here in Brazil, a program of uh, Football for Hope, a program of sustainability, and uh, we will have a, a forum, Football for Hope, during three or four days, and it will take place in uh, Belo Horizonte in June, from the 25th to the 28th, 29th. And on this 26th of June, there is a special day, a special day. The 26th of June, 2013, and you go backwards 10 years, and then you are in 2003 in France, and in, two, in this very day happened this tragic passing away of a football player on the field of play, Vivian Foy. And therefore, this 2013, now, 26th of June, will be for us a very special day a very special day in a forum football for hope and a very special day also to commemorate what has changed in between these 10 years in uh, prevention and uh, dealing with uh, sudden heart attacks that was the case with these players you remember last year defibrillators were distributed everywhere in the world and we want to have in all stadia at least one defibrillator in order that first aid can be supplied uh, to such a situation. But, but let's come back. Let's come back uh, to this competition. In this competition, we will have uh, one technical new approach, but a very important one. It's the first time now that in such a competition, FIFA will not test, but will use goal line technology. Goal line technology to help the referees, and all the referees, they are happy to have a system that will give them the security, the guarantee to say if a goal has been scored or not. I'm very anxious to see how it, uh, how it works. Because if there are not, no conflicting situations, we don't need it. But in these 16 matches of the champions, there must be some conflicting situation. There will be. We will see that. Concerning the match officials, we will uh, still have uh, our uh, uh, trios. One uh, referee, only one referee, in the middle of the field, running the diagonal as all referee when they are born, they start to run the diagonal. And uh, two assistants, which were called linesmen, and we have a force official. The force official will test something, but uh, it is just an internal test. We will not disclose what we want to do there, but the force official will have a special task to do also. Uh, otherwise, I welcome the uh, teams coming from all around the world. They are already here. I welcome all the fans, especially those coming from abroad. There are not so many, many, many. 
but I especially welcome the representative of the international media. And uh, I thank you. I thank you for your interest. I thank you for your interest for football, but uh, the interest also for this exceptional competition called FIFA's Confederations Cup Brazil. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like to ask um, President Marin for his remarks. Boa tarde a todos. Good afternoon, one and all. Nossos cumprimentos ao presidente da FIFA. Our compliments to the president of FIFA, Joseph Oblader, to the minister of sports, Aldo Rebelo, to the secretary general of FIFA, Jerome Volke, to Jacques Anuma, member of the executive committee of FIFA, Ricardo Tradi, who is my colleague from the CBF. We had a very productive uh, meeting where we uh, talked about uh, the latest uh, details of the organization of this uh, Confederations uh, Cup, uh, our festival of champions. For years of hard work, government uh, entities, agencies, uh, FIFA, and uh, our organization, but now it is high time. Now it is uh, the time for the ball to be played. Uh, Enterprise people will leave aside uh, the preparations and the uh, logistic uh, details that have been so much uh, talked about and analyzed, negotiated, analyzed, and reanalyzed uh, so that they can talk about what is uh, the greatest interest uh, for the lover of the best sport in the world. Yes, this Saturday, football will be positioned at the very core of the world attention. It's a place. Uh, which attracts uh, billions of people throughout the planet. This Saturday in Brasilia, we will begin in our country. It will be the kickoff of the largest uh, football championship since the 1950 Cup. We are now moving into a new era for our football and essentially mainly for the fans, the fans that are the soul of that party in our state, that festival that uh, will be taking place in our country. We have six modern stadiums uh, following international patterns uh, with comfortable and functional facilities in order to accommodate professionals, uh, media, and fans. I am absolutely sure that the eight national teams have all the necessary conditions in order to showcase their talent in this wonderful stadiums and this beautiful sport, and that leaving a huge legacy for our football and particularly for the Brazilian fan. Last but not least, I would like to make an appeal. I urge all fans that will go to Brasilia, arrive early, in order to avoid uh, standing in lines and having long lines, and also to take advantage of the pre-game attractions, particularly the beautiful opening ceremony that our volunteers have been rehearsing with uh, so much devotion. Therefore, it is extremely important uh, to have this uh, communication. The doors will be opened uh, as an exception so that you can participate uh, in that uh, beauty four hours in advance, uh, have a wonderful journey, and have wonderful games. Thank you. Before uh, we go to the, the questions, to your questions, um, I would like to ask the uh, Minister of Sport, uh, Aldo Rebello, for his remarks. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished uh, President uh, Blatter, may you be welcome once again to Brazil. Distinguished uh, Secretary General Jerome Valque, you may you be also very welcome. Walter de Gregorio, good afternoon, may you be welcome. Distinguished uh, Jacques Anuma, may you be very welcome. Acting uh, Chairman of the Confederations Cup, uh, President Marine, and with me as uh, the host, uh, 
please allow me to extend to you the most uh, cordial welcome to you. I believe that uh, we can state that, that uh, Brazil's uh, preparation for the Confederations Cup after a huge effort uh, deployed in building uh, stadiums, preparing uh, security, telecommunications, uh, urban transport, airports. We are ready. We're in a position to live up to the expectation of the country itself and of the world in holding this important uh, event uh, of world uh, football organized uh, by FIFA. It seems to me that uh, the time has come after all these uh, lessons and Nigeria is on its way and uh, Brazil will be in a position to hold a wonderful festival of uh, football at a global scale. As you know, there was a delay in the delivery of some of the stadiums we were only to deliver this in December, that of uh, Fortaleza and uh, that of uh, Belo Horizonte. But even with that uh, delay, you all saw games and matches and events that put to a test uh, the access of the security. And I believe that they're all ready in order to bring all the matches and all these uh, games as of uh, the opening match on the 15th uh, in Brasilia. I truly hope uh, that uh, the media, those who are not uh, Brazilians, uh, but the foreign members of the media, will have the necessary working conditions, the best uh, technology at your disposal in order to broadcast uh, and to transmit uh, the information, and that Brazil will live up uh, to this uh, besides uh, the Confederations Cup, uh, that we live up uh, to our statement uh, that we will be ready in a position to hold uh, the World Cup in 2014. This afternoon, President uh, Dilma from Brasilia will deliver the six integrated command and control centers uh, on public uh, security in each one of the sta stadiums of the Confederations Cup. Even the National Command and Control Center that is also a guarantee that attests to the fact uh, that the country is offering to its local population and to the visitors all the necessary security conditions uh, while we hold this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished uh, minister. As always, please uh, tell us your name and for uh, whom you're working for. Um, wait for the microphone. Go ahead there. No microphone? Just for the translation. Just for the translation. No? You know what? Maybe then, then you stay here around. Yeah. Um, Mr. Blatter, it's Ben Smith from the BBC in, in England. Just wanted to ask you about reports that Nigeria are refusing to travel to the tournament. What do you know about this, and are you confident that they will participate in the Confederations Cup? Thank you for your question. I give it directly to the Secretary General, who is in charge of all logistical matters in FIFA and in this World Cup. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I spoke with the team manager, and they will be uh, in the plane on Saturday and will be at the Confederation Cup. So the problem is solved. Yeah, the, pro the, the issue is solved, and they will fly to uh, Brazil on Saturday. Thanks. Yes, next one here, please. Um, 
Good afternoon. Uh, Philippe Araujo from Germany, ZDF. Mr. Platter, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked uh, Mr. Volk yesterday. Uh, I can get this picture out of my mind of workers, as we speak, of workers outside the Maracana still, still, still doing construction work. Um, I, just, I just want to hear from you assurances. I mean, by no means I speak to, to Brazilians on the street. I spoke to the workers. No one believes the stadium is truly ready. They, they all think this is a makeup job. Things will happen that, 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 will, that will prompt uh, the organizing committee to do more construction work in the stadium. What do you have to say about that? Thank you. Thank you for your, for your question. And, uh, it would be easier for me to listen directly than to try it uh, through the audit system. Um, the Minister of Sports has just said there has been some delays in uh, construction of stadium or other facilities, but uh, the president of the Football Federation at the same time uh, has confirmed that in all the facilities we are going to use now, or the old stadia, the, uh, there have been test competitions and it has been shown that it works. So better than I, I should ask perhaps Mr. Robello or to answer the, the, the question why they are still working. They are still working because they will try to finish it. That's my pers personal opinion. Two days before the, the, the competition begins, that shouldn't, that shouldn't be happening. Okay. Now, now I am on your track. Now I'm on your track. I will not speak about my life, but I would, I will, I would like to speak about my experiences with the World Cup. And here we are on the situation of a Confederations Cup, which is an additional competition that is played at the moment or to give the opportunity to the organizer to have two, uh, two events at the same time or the same year. I have been in competitions where at the opening match, at the opening match, the opening match of the real competition, one hour before the, let's say, the head of state arrives, there were still painters painting somewhere, something. So therefore, I think uh, there is a lot of work that will be done in the, in the last minute. So for me, it is not a surprise that two days to go, they are still working somewhere. It means that something is not finished, so we should just say, okay, then finish it. But in different competitions, and I'm in the World Cup since, directly involved since 1976, uh, 78, 1978. And I have witnessed a lot of such problems. And finally, when the kickoff was at that specific stadium. Other remarks from the minister, please. The stadium was delivered. There was a test match that was held between two teams. One was uh, organized uh, by Ronaldo, the phenomenon, and the other one by Bebeto. After that, there was a game, a match uh, between the Brazilian uh, team and uh, the team from England, full success. The match uh, took place uh, within tranquility, security, and you say that this might be makeup. But I don't know how they can uh, conduct makeup in their country. I don't know how these people do it, because uh, here, what they did in Maracara, if that was a makeup, uh, I'm really sorry for the people that do makeup uh, in, uh, I don't know where you are from. Where do you work? What is the media? Where do you work? Could be, could be. But uh, the media you represent, because 
Maracana was uh, subjected to those uh, tests. Uh, there was a game that was uh, broadcast uh, on national TV for the entire country and also for the world. And it is obvious that if there's still work uh, going on in uh, Maracana, particularly in the cover, because uh, we have uh, to clearly say that not everything around the stadium has its works uh, foreseen uh, for the Confederations Cup. We're also looking forward uh, to the 2014 World Cup. Uh, so we have the situation not only in Maracana, but in other people. We still have people working in finishing or fine tuning uh, the preparation in order to welcome the Confederations uh, Cup and the matches that will take place there. So it seems to me that this is not fair, it is not just, and it is not correct to believe that the stadium is still going through makeup and cover. There was a lot of work done, a huge effort was made in order to deliver this for the Confederations Cup. Good afternoon, Sergio one and all. Sergio de Marais, RBS, Radio Gaúcha. I initially wish uh, to thank uh, the welcome uh, that we're having by holding this press conference as well as other events uh, that have uh, been organized and provided uh, by relevant uh, entities of the Confederations Cup. I do want to address a question to President Jose Maria Marin and also to the Secretary General, to Jerome Volk, uh, that has to do with the technique. It is a curiosity that we all have. Uh, President Marin, Brazil is going to try to have a double championship of this uh, competition. I have uh, been attending uh, several World Cups and other tournaments of this nature, and I believe that this time the Brazilian team does not have all the popular support. Uh, but after, after the victory over France, uh, there was an increase uh, in that expectation as to what is going to happen in order to give more incentives and move uh, the team members and the players to run more, to play more. Could you Tell us, uh, what is the award that, that you're planning to give our players if there's a, a double championship? And Jerome, what is uh, the participation of these uh, teams uh, after they win? Well, first of all, I'd like uh, to let you know that uh, the most important thing for a player, a member of the Brazilian team, and of any technical committee, the main thing, the essential thing, is to conquer the title. I can assure you, I can guarantee, and I'm saying this as the president and as a friend, essentially, of uh, Felipe Scolari. The least uh, worry to all players in any technical committee is uh, the aspect of the award, uh, the prize. I can tell you that this has already been discussed. Uh, this has already been discussed. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, Contrary to what the media has said, this has been duly negotiated and discussed, and there was not any problem. There's no problem whatsoever. I wanted to, to give you a very important statement, starting with Felipe Scolari. When we invited him to be the uh, coach of the Brazilian team, when we came to the financial aspect of it, our talk did not take any longer than 30 seconds, no more than 30 seconds. He didn't ask for anything, and I, Jose Maria Marin, was the one who offered to him what the CBF was ready and able to provide. So the answer took 30 seconds, and he said, the financial question does not exist. What I want is to win the World Cup. So I've already responded to you. That has already been stipulated. But it was a matter of ethics, of elegance. After the Confederations Cup, I can tell you with the agreement of the players, I can share with you this information. But the problem does not exist, not even with the technical committee and much less with the players. Um. As a French citizen, I would not talk about the motivation of the Brazilian players uh, because I think they show how to, uh, how to score three times a game. So. so they were quite motivated that day. Um, to tell you, uh, yes, it is a great, um, a great event for all the teams. I mean, it's champions, champions from each of the confederations. So they know that by winning this 
title, I mean, they will become the champion of the champions of the Confederation. So that's why it's a, such an important tournament for all the teams coming to, uh, to uh, Brazil. And don't forget um, that we have already won, and the only one, by the way, team who has qualified for the next World Cup, Japan. So it shows that the teams coming to the Confederations Cup are high-level teams, and Japan being the first one, it's uh, the, the opening game, but it's the first team who will be joining Brazil or has joined Brazil uh, for next year to play the, the World Cup. Thank you very much. Last three questions. Last three questions. As you know, of, as, uh, of tomorrow we have a press conference at 10.30 at the Maracanã every day. So, uh, Buenas tardes. Eliberto Good afternoon, Bustos Eliberto Arreño Bustos uh, from uh, the Marathon magazine and also from uh, Colombia. And this is for President uh, Blatter. If there's a possibility of responding in Spanish, how will this uh, work uh, theoretically and manually? The technology, the goal line technology, and if you have a plan B, because uh, if, if it doesn't work, uh, do you have a plan B if a goal line technology doesn't work? Thank you very much uh, for um, your question. And uh, I congratulate you, the Colombian team, for uh, the good uh, path uh, that they've had uh, and the good results uh, for the World Cup. Uh, and uh, congratulating Colombia because they will organize uh, FIFA's uh, futsal championship in uh, the years to come. Now, the goal line technology is the solution. It is not one solution. It is the solution. And uh, this is going to assist uh, the referee in cases of a conflict, uh, of knowing whether the ball is or is not uh, in the goal line. And plan B doesn't exist. Plan B doesn't exist because it is a technical system, a technical system that uh, has been tested. And in all the tests uh, performed, we've done that uh, with a Swiss organization, a very difficult uh, to convince a Swiss organization. We must uh, say that uh, the two or three systems uh, that currently exist, uh, these uh, three systems are completely reliable. And obviously, the technology or perfection, not only perfection in technology, but also perfection in scientific sciences uh, does not exist. But uh, we expect, uh, we hope, and I said this previously, that we will be faced uh, with uh, some conflicting situations which will enable us uh, to show this uh, technique, uh, the goal line technology, and also to assist uh, the referee and provide immediate information to the public, uh, to the TV cameras, that can say if a goal was scored or not. That is it. And for your information, as I said, tomorrow at 10.30, the media, media briefing at the Maracana will be about uh, goal line technology. So then you can have uh, all the answers uh, you want. And uh, next question here. No, here. Good day to all. Marcos Lacerda, da Rádio Band News FM. We are receiving uh, claims uh, from uh, the fans. I'm sorry, but the microphone is not working. The mic is not working, so they're not getting the sound. That microphone was not working. No, it doesn't have to do with the volume. The microphone is not working. I've received uh, claims. Uh, I'm sorry, but the microphone is not working. The fans uh, bought uh, tickets uh, for the uh, game between Italy and Mexico, Category 3, for the final match of Category 1 that was placed in Category 3. These are specific matches. Do you have any difference? Uh, I'm sorry, but the sound is not working. The microphone is not working. Uh, 
Um, I mean, that's something maybe we, we can look at because each stadium is different. Uh, and on each stadium, the, the seating is a different one and the, 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 the design of the stadium is a different one. And never forget, uh, and I'm sorry to say that it's the same as being uh, seated in a plane, you will never find the same price for the, same p the person who are sitting on your right on your left. Uh, I mean, you, the, the category, and between the categories two and three, there is only one seat. Uh, so it means that uh, you move from category two to category three in a stadium just by one row. And that's why uh, suddenly you have the feeling that potentially your seat should be in category two when the other one is in category three. Uh, but again, I mean, you have, the, the category one goes from, uh, from a level of the stadium to the upper level and because it's in a certain zone. So it's by zone that we divide the stadiums for each of the category. And it's true that you can happen that a seat is uh, less good than another one in the same category, but that's by principle the structure of a stadium and there's nothing much you can do. Um, so uh, I, I cannot answer more, but we could go through each of the stadium for you to understand how it works and how we have divided the stadium. May I say something which has nothing to do with your question? But again, it's a call and we need you media to uh, relay this call. I mean, we have thousands of people who have not collected their tickets, thousands. Thousands of people who have paid for their tickets and they have not yet collected their tickets. We have 6,000 people for the opening game in Brasilia. We have, uh, I think, more than 20,000 people for the game Italy-Mexico in Copacabana, in uh, the Maracana. Uh, so again, I mean, you have so many people who have bought their tickets but not collected the tickets and they need to do so now, not on the match day because on the match day they cannot do, it's impossible. So please, I mean, we need your support there. Thank you, Jerome. Last question for today. Well, okay, that's, uh, well then, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I, I meant another one. Boa tarde, André Galindo, da TV Globo. Ainda sobre o assunto. This has to You ask Mr. Valke, I give the floor to Mr. Valke. No, I mean, the first part was the, the FIFA president, but I will take over. Um, I mean, it, it's a success. I mean, we have sold uh, three times more tickets here in Brazil than we did in South Africa. So it's clearly a huge interest from Brazil on the, on the uh, Confederations Cup, and that's, uh, that's very good. You're right, there are still tickets for sale in the different stadiums, not anymore um, in the, uh, for the opening game or for any game played here uh, with the Brazilian team. I mean, the Brazilian team is definitely a team where uh, you, uh, stadiums are sold out, but there are still tickets uh, in various games. Um, so that's where the, the way to get the tickets again, I mean, it's known. I mean, there are ticketing centers and you can buy your tickets. Um, regarding what you said, it's about education. I think that uh, uh, it's good that we have the Confederations Cup and that Brazilians will understand that they cannot get their tickets on the match day at the Confederations Cup because at the World Cup it will be even worse. Uh, so we need for all people to understand that you buy a ticket and you have to collect your tickets days before the game. It's, the, it's, it's part of the culture. I mean, in, uh, in Europe, most of the people, as soon as they pay for the tickets, they immediately want to have the ticket in their hands and just to make sure that they have the tickets at the first minute they pay for. Here, most of the people who are buying tickets, they are fine to wait until the last minute and just to go to the stadium and get their sta tickets at the stadium and move into the stadium. That cannot happen uh, at the Confederations Cup and uh, definitely not at all uh, at the World Cup. So that's why, again, it's very important to understand that that's a regulation, a system, mainly for security reason also, that we don't, have to, we don't want to have thousands of people waiting for collecting their tickets on a match day. Thank you, Jerome. I think uh, we stop here. Thanks for uh, being here and excuse us that we uh, have to go, but we're here for another two weeks and a uh, little more. So uh, have a nice day and see you tomorrow. Thank you.